All right, guys, this is a very exciting day. We got the access port from Cobb. So this platform is something I've been wanting to work on for a long time, and I wasn't gonna support it unless Cobb came out with their solution. So it's finally here. So we just got this. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna update the access port, take it inside and update it, and then we're going to get back out here and install it. So let's start that process now, and then we'll get back in here and start the install. So this is a screen protector, remove film. So it's not just this, it's also a screen protector here. A lot of people will get that confused. So this whole thing comes off. We'll plug it into our computer. All right, so access port manager is launched. We go to updates, check for firmware update, and it's using the latest firmware update. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna connect a battery charger to the vehicle. That way, if there are any voltage fluctuations, we're gonna be okay. So we're gonna go ahead and take the cover off here. Connect the positive. Start up the charger and go inside the vehicle. Alrighty, so we're gonna power up the access port here. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna install the access port. So I've keyed on and I'm gonna turn the air conditioner off and then uh, go to okay. Install. It recognizes the vehicle. So I'm gonna pick the map. Now, if you've purchased from me, you're going to have a map with your name on it. If not, then these are all OTS maps here. So we're gonna pick the Performance 91 Octane with OEM plus TCM. Got a battery charger on, let's go. So here you're gonna to wanna to back up the factory data. You only need to do this one time. And if you've done it before, then you can just skip it. So weird stuff is gonna happen here behind the dash. You know, the dash is gonna do this kind of stuff. The screen might go off, that goes off, but you'll notice that it's still continuing to flash. So we're gonna let this go through and we will come back to you when it is completely finished or close to. So now that this is finished, it says this, and it's gonna still say a bunch of weird stuff. This may come back on. Um, but that's fine. So we're going to key off, like it mentions, and we are going to give it 15 seconds before we start the vehicle. Currently in the new uh, 2023 Explorer ST, um, Cobb is going to be releasing software for this, and so uh, we're just taking our, our uh, steps to get to the dyno today do some baseline testing. Um, I want to throw uh, E40 in, E50 in, and see what it does on E50. But uh, yeah, I'm super excited to, to support this platform. This is something I've wanted to do for a long time now. And it's exciting to see that Cobb, that Cobb, is, finally, uh, Cobb is finally supporting this. So the, the Cobb access port device is something that you guys know about, something that you guys really enjoy. And it's the only platform that I tune on. And so to have Cobb now into this ST group uh, a couple years later, uh, just like they did the Raptor, um, and successful there. Uh, it's it's going to be a joy to finally get in, into the ST. So we're going to get here. We're going to go to Hammer Performance because these these vehicles need a link to Dyno, and we're going to start our testing today. I've been doing lots and lots of street testing. I probably have. 25, 26 miles of wide open throttle data that I've been going through. So it's been put through spaces already. This car has 2,800 miles and lots and lots of them are quarter mile runs, uh, wide open throttle pulls, um, just a bunch of a bunch of testing. So I've, I've had this now for I think six weeks, four, four to six weeks. And yeah, I've been driving it a lot. So we're gonna get on the dyno today uh, and, and do some fine tuning. I've had a lot of people ask me um, what I expect from from the numbers wise from this car and to be honest I don't really know. Um, I see numbers, dyno charts all over the place, I see draggy times all over the place, uh, but these numbers here that are going to be um, given today are going to be my numbers. My dyno, my baseline, uh, my 91 tune, uh, my E85 tune or E50 tune in this case, 
Uh, so we'll see what it does. Uh, I'm not 100% familiar with this platform. I am familiar with Ford though, Ford EcoBoost. And the nice thing about that platform or this platform as well included is that a lot of it translates over very easily. Looking over the tables initially, uh, a lot of it's the same. So it's just a different engine. Um, it's gonna respond a little bit different, but the calibration aspect of things is, is gonna be very close. So I don't expect there to be many holdups here. Um, I expect it to be pretty straightforward, uh, but we'll see. We'll see what the dyno does and we'll see what kind of numbers I get. Alrighty, so we just finished the first pull and it made 354 wheel horsepower, 430 foot pounds of torque. And that's stock tune, so that's that's not bad. This thing feels good. Um, it's actually right up there with a, a Raptor, a Gen 2 Raptor, Gen 3 Raptor, so pretty close. Um, and I'm hoping I'm hoping we can get the same results as a Raptor, that'd be awesome. So we're gonna throw on our first revision of the 91 octane tune and start calibrating from there. All right, so we just finished up our pulls on our tune, and the first pull out of the gate made 423 wheel horsepower and 444 foot-pounds of torque. So that's a, a pretty big difference. Um, and that's gonna feel great. Uh, let's take a look at this real quick. Yeah, so that's awesome. So we're gonna work on the tune some more, uh, make some more changes, and then go from there. I want to show you guys how long it takes to flash a tune. So I'm gonna turn the car on and I'm going to hit flash. Now this is awesome because it's super quick. So I made a few changes to fueling and ignition timing. And at this point, um, I mean, I, I guess I'd like to see 450 horsepower. You know, I'm not too sure if that's possible, um, but we'll, we'll shoot for it. Right now it's at 423, which is pretty good. Uh, yeah, so let's check this out. So the map is currently uh, creating itself and then sending it to the access port over here. And then from the access port, it flashes. So once you see 0% here, it's gonna start the flashing process. And like I was saying earlier, this is where other devices may take, uh, you know, five minutes, six minutes. And if you're changing tunes at a gas station or changing tunes revisions on the side of the road because you're currently logging, you're not gonna wanna spend you know, five minutes, 10 minutes on the side of the road. Uh, you're gonna wanna make your own changes quickly and then get back out to, to start logging. So yeah, the access port just eats through this, which is super cool. So far it's been about a minute. Feel free to fast forward. So the flashing is done. Dash came back on. It's gonna tell me here in the tuning software to go ahead and turn off the key and everything, but that's it. So we'll, we'll try this other revision here shortly.
Alrighty, so I think we finished up our 91 octane tuning. Um, we made 436 wheel horsepower and 450 wheel torque. So that's awesome. Uh, it's a pretty big jump in power. I'll go ahead and post the, the delta here. Another thing I wanted to do for you guys is test the Cobb access port OTS map. Now this was a map that is made by the engineers at Cobb and these guys put a lot of effort, a lot of time into testing this, soak testing it. And so I wanna show you guys the results from this because it's interesting. Um, I've been running this map for a while now and it's it's been perfect, it feels great and it's safe. So check this out. The red line is the OEM tune at 354, 430. And the blue line is the Cobb map at 383, 437. So you can really see the big difference in, in the power, especially up top. Um, a solid 30 horsepower. So it comes with the access port, it's included for free. So that's just another benefit. And this is 91 octane, so 93 octane is even gonna be better. So I do, I do recommend OTS stuff if you guys um, just want a, a nice safe tune, you wanna just try the access port device, get used to it. So once you guys have it, you can jump up to a pro tune and make even more horsepower. So I'm gonna overlay all three of these right now so you guys can see it. Uh, it's gonna be the stock tune, the Cobb OTS map, and then my custom pro tune. And keep in mind, this is all on 91 octane, so you're gonna make even more on 93. So yeah, I think we're gonna go ahead and start our E50 tuning. Uh, gotta throw that in and get started, so stay tuned. Well, we're all finished up for today. Um, I ran out of time, so I'll have to come back, but we're sitting at 473 wheel horsepower and 468 foot pounds of torque. So that's awesome, especially for the first day on the dyno. So um, I still have downpipes I gotta put on, uh, I have a thermal exhaust, um, so we're gonna get that stuff on and then we'll eventually come back, hopefully this week, possibly. But uh, I'm shooting for between 500 and 525. So we got a little ways to go, but this is a, this is a great start. So we'll get this off the dyno and out on the road. Another cool feature that the access port has that I'd like to mention too is it's called dynamic pedal control. A lot of times customers will like to make adjustments to the way the throttle feels and so they'll go out and buy something that's called a pedal commander or a pedal monster. And actually the access port has dynamic pedal control, which is what you see here. And what this does is it allows you to set the pedal the way you'd like to set the pedal. So I like mine at two, uh, but it goes all the way up to 10. So if you like it really sensitive or you wanna desensitize it, uh, it goes even into the negatives. So it really depends on what you guys wanna do. Another thing the access port has is what's called auto start stop. Meaning when you stop at a stoplight, it won't shut the, tr the car off. So I don't like that, so I'm gonna turn that off and it saves that setting. It's also got valet mode, if you guys need to valet your car. And it also has uh, setting the tire size, if you guys need to, to change this tire size. So there's a lot of other cool features that the access port has that's not really mentioned. So not only can you monitor gauges, flash from it, do performance monitoring, but you can also uh, change tire size, dynamic pedal control, and a few other cool things.